All right, so today's notes are page 16, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at patterns, and then we're gonna write explicit and recursive equations. So first we have to see how the pattern is growing. Now, we had only done linear before, but now we have to see that this is actually growing by three each time. So two plus four will give you six, but six plus four won't give you 18. So you're not adding, you're actually multiplying by three. Well, if you're multiplying by three every time, then you know that this is a um, arithmetic or geometric equation. This is definitely a geometric equation. So what I'm gonna have to do is get my notes from the geometric equation and say, I need to write the explicit and recursive equation. Well, for the explicit, I can either use my zero term or my first term. What do you guys think this is? The zero term or the first term? If they don't tell you that that's the zero term, you can imply that this is actually your first term. Well, if that's your first term, then we're gonna write the explicit equation. The explicit equation with the zero term or the explicit equation with the first term? Well, we're gonna use this one. The only thing we need to know is the first term. Well, what's the first term? Two. What's the common ratio? Three. So we're just gonna plug this in, and the only values we plug in are the first term and the common ratio, and these stay variables. So our explicit equation is f of x equals my first term, my first term we said was two, times the common ratio, common ratio we know is multiplying by three every time, because I use the first term, then I'm going to put x minus 1. So that's your explicit equation. Again, if we plugged in 100, it would give me the 100th term. 20, I would find the 20th term. The recursive equation tells you how the pattern is growing. Well, if you look at your notes, the recursive equation, the only thing you need to know is your r value. You already know how the pattern's growing. It's getting multiplied by 3 every time. So what you're going to do is f of x equals your common ratio, 3, times the previous term. You multiply 3 by the previous term to get the next term. That's all that is saying. That's it. Okay, number 2. Okay, so for the next problem... It's still um, a pattern, but they wrote it in a table format. So go ahead and copy this. You have your x and your y values, 0, 30, 1, 15, 2, 7.5, 3, and 3.75. So what you want to do here again is see how your pattern is growing. Okay, subtract 15. Subtra nope, you're not subtracting, but it is going down. What's the relationship between 30 and 15? Well, 15 is half of 30, okay, and 7.5 is half of 15. So you're dividing by 2 every time. When you have a geometric equation, you cannot say that you're dividing. It's always multiplying. So if you have a geometric equation and you're dividing by 2, that is the same as multiplying by one half. So in this case, what letter do we use for um, what we're multiplying by? The letter R. So R is equal to one half. Then we're gonna do the same thing, write the explicit and recursive equations. So I go back to my notes and I say, okay, what, I have the table, I can either use the explicit equation with the zero term or with the first term. Well, they gave me my zero term, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this equation. The only thing I need to know is my zero term. The value of your zero term is 30. Your common ratio you've already identified as one half. So, put it all together. Okay, 
f of x equals your zero term. Zero term was 30 times your common ratio. Common ratio was 1 half and raised to the x power. Again, because I use a zero term, I don't have to use the x minus 1. When you use a zero term, it's just going to be x. Recursive equation is going to be the same. So recursive is, in order to find the next term, you write, to find the next term, it's equal to the previous term times what you're multiplying by. Well, you're multiplying by 1 half. So it's 1 half times the previous term. All right. You could have also written this as um, the previous term times 1 half. That's like saying 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. It's the multiplication property, but um, they actually prefer it this way, but it actually means the same exact thing. All right. Should we try one more? That's good.